today I am going to explain the experiment number 7, the function generator and the cathode ray oscilloscope. In this experiment, we are just going to get some small idea, little idea about what is function generator and also what is CRO. That is it. There will be no graph for this experiment. But if you listen this experiment very carefully, then your experiment number 8 will be very easy. Clear? Okay, let us see what is the function of function generator. My dear, here I just wrote with my pencil, the function generator is used to generate the signal. Okay, likewise the CRO, cathode ray oscilloscope function, it is provide accurate time and amplitude measurements of voltage signal over a wide range of frequencies. So, this is a function of CRO. So, when I just explain the table part, by the time you will get a clear information about this information. Clear? So, let us we just come for our objective. What is our objective? We are going to understand the basic functions and key controls of a function generator and a cathode ray oscilloscope. And by this, we are going to learn how to measure the periods, frequency and the amplitude of the periodic wave by using an oscilloscope. Clear? So, in this experiment, we are just going to learn something about both devices. What are the both devices? The function generator and CRO. Understand my dear? So, what are the devices today we are going to use? Only three important devices today we are going to use. The first one is function generator and the second one is the CRO. Here you are going to generate the signal, you are going to view the signal here. Clear my dear? You generate the signal here by using the function generator and the CRO is used to view the signal. What signal you generate here, that signal you can see in the, the monitor. There will be small screen. In this screen, you can view the signal. Clear? And also, we are going to use one digital multimeter. And we are going to use this multimeter only in the second table. Actually, today, we have two tables in this experiment. We are going to use this digital multimeter only in the second table. Clear? Okay. Let's we just have a look of the apparatus. What are the apparatus today we are going to use? You can see, we already used this apparatus in the previous experiment, speed up the sound. So, this device is called as function generator or signal generator. So here you already know what are the functions you have here. If you just have a look here, this knob is used to change the frequency and this one is used to change the voltage and here you can choose different types of waveform. If you press this, you can fix any type of waveform, square wave, triangle wave, um, sine wave. So, there are different types of waveform, but for today's experiment, we are going to use only the sine wave. Clear? And here, these buttons are just to move the pointer to set the value. And this is your power, power switch. Clear, my dear? And now, we have to look our CRO. If you just see the CRO, there are a lot of function keys are there. So, in this experiment, we are going to learn few functions, few key functions we are going to learn from this device. So here we have many buttons and turning knobs are there and here we have one small square shape monitor. So here if you just see the square shape monitor, it's exactly look like a graph paper. Am I right? So here we have the center axis, x axis and this is your y axis. And if you just see the lines in the middle, you can see each box there are five small lines are there and each line carries 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1. That means one box have one unit. So in this one box there are small lines are there. Each small lines represent here is 0.2 value both in the x axis both in the y axis. Understand my dear? And apart from that I will just explain when I just going to take the reading in the table. And after that, we are going to use this digital multimeter and we are going to use this multimeter only in the second table, not in the first table. Understand? Okay. Let us we just have a look of the table. What are the tables today we are going to use? You have two big tables. The first table, we are going to fix our voltage as a constant. What is our voltage, my dear, here? Here we have to fix 5 voltage. But in the first table, we are going to change the frequency. We are going to change the frequency in terms of kilohertz. That means, what is the difference between the first table and the second table? First table, you are going to fix the voltage as a constant. You are going to change the frequency. But in the second table, 
you are going to fix the frequency as a constant value and then you are going to change the voltage you can see here voltage is fixed voltage sorry frequency is fixed voltage is sorry voltage is different likewise in the first table your voltage is fixed but your frequency is different clear understand my dear but these calculations are very easy it's a small calculation and uh, when i just take the reading for each table i'm going to what i'm going to do i'm going to take one reading for each table and in such a way you have to take the reading for the rest of the values understood okay let's we just start with the apparatus you can just have a look here i already gave the connection and both device should be connected to 220 volt which is already connected to the electricity clear and then now you can just have a look here i'm going to turn on this function generator and here what is given in the first table my dear we have to set 5 volt and also we have to set 50 kilohertz it's not only 50 you can see here it is 50 in terms of kilohertz so i'm going to fix this value here so by touching this you have to set 50 kilohertz here already the function is given in terms of kilohertz if you want to give the value in terms of hertz also possible but i don't want to uh, use hertz here because the values are very bigger so what i am going to do i am going to uh, fix the value in terms of kilohertz so here you have to fix 50 kilohertz so 10 kilohertz i fixed you can see just before i told you this buttons are to move the pointer if you just move the pointer it will come here now you can easily set to 50 kilohertz and then you have to touch this to set the 5 volt if you touch this you can see here the value of the voltage will be changing here so here we have to set 5 volt we set 5 voltage clear so 50 kilohertz we is fixed also 5 voltage we fixed and apart from that you no need to worry about anything that's it we have to give this much of frequency some voltage and this signal will be given to the CRO now before I turn on this CRO I would like to tell you something about this CRO my dear this CRO is used to view the signal and here there are some important functions are there we, we, we are not going to learn all these things but we are going to learn only few functions so before you start you have to before you just turn on this device first of all you must know these three knobs and these three knobs are the initial adjustment what is the function of this initial adjustment if you touch this you can set the intensity that means clarity and likewise here focus if the signal is very blurred if you touch this if you just turn this you can make your signal appear on the screen will be very clear and by touching this you can avoid the background light radiation because the light ray background light will affect the, uh, the the visibility of the signal here so before you start taking the reading from this device you have to touch these things i will tell you one by one and apart from that you have three important knobs the first knob and the second knob is used for voltage change these both are voltage sensitivity and this one is time sensitivity understand so here if you just have a look here these both are voltage sensitivity but here you have two connections if you make the connection here then you have to touch this but if you make the connection to the first channel then you have to touch only this because this is just a dummy even if you uh, after you turn on the device because there will be no connection in this channel so if you touch this there will be no change appeared on the screen the most important thing before you operate this you have to see in which channel the connection is given if the connection is given to the first channel means you have to touch only this so these both are voltage so you have to if you make the connection here you have to touch this understood so now what we did we gave the connection to the first channel so what i am going to do i am going to touch only this and also this one is the time variation and here by using this you can move the waveform signal form up and down by touching this you can move the waveform left to right so apart from that there are many functions i don't want to say uh, i don't want to explain more to confuse you so better we have to use only these buttons and turning knobs to understand some basic functions clear okay let's we just start here i already fixed the 50 kilohertz and also voltage we said now what i'm going to do i'm going to turn on this cro when i turn on what will appear you can just have a look here this frequency the frequency what we applied here it will be 
sent to the CRO and that frequency based on the frequency and the voltage you can easily view the waveform now it's not clear what I'm going to do I am going to touch this and this to set a clear waveform so what what I'm going to do I'm going to touch the voltage and also time you can see here it's a perfect sine wave I told you just before we are going to use only the sine wave for our calculation now what you are going to do it's very easiest experiment and you are going to use the same concept in the eighth experiment so please my dear listen this information very carefully now we gave the frequency as 50 kilohertz we gave the voltage as 5 volt based on that you just saw the sine wave signal on the screen now what we are going to do we are going to measure something from here i told you my dear this three device three is three turning knobs you can see if i just return this intensity to low you cannot be able to see the signal so before you take the reading you have to make your intensity very bright likewise this focus if your waveform is very blurred you have to make a very sharp line and also if you turn this you can see there are some lights in the background so if you want to avoid this background light you have to make zero clear so now what i am going to do i am going to take some reading from this waveform so let's we just see what is given in the table we fixed 50 kilohertz now what we are going to measure my dear what we are going to measure here you can just read here number of divisions between two minima what is minima for example i'm just draw the i will draw the wave from here for example if this will be your wave you have to find what should be the distance between these two minima so the distance between the peak to peak horizontally we are going to measure clear so that information is given we are going to find the number of division how many divisions present between these two minima clear so you are going to count some value i told you each small line in the graph the in the monitor is represents 0.2 value so we are going to find how many divisions present between these two minima you can just have a look of the screen we got two minima you can see we got two minima what i am going to do by touching this i am going to move this waveform to the axis scale and here i am going to fix this peak to one line and i am going to touch this peak to the x axis line now you can just have a look here this peak exactly start from here from this peak to this peak how many divisions are there each line here represent 0.2 that means one complete box two complete box three complete box four complete box and this is 4.2 that means one box you have five small lines each small lines represent 0.2 that means here four complete box are there that means one complete box second complete box third one fourth one and if you just see the fifth box only the peak appears to the 0.2 that means totally 4.2 divisions between these two minima 4.2 you can count 1 2 3 4 and you can just see the peak and you can see the peak this peak tip is exactly here am i right that means it's 0 0.2 so 1 2 3 4 4.2 so what i'm going to do i'm going to write the value here clear and then horizontal sensitivity i told you just before this is your vertical sensitivity this is your horizontal sensitivity now you can just have a look here my dear this arrow mark this arrow marks indicates what value here you can see here two microsecond am i right so this arrow mark this line indicate two microsecond if you just have a look here so here this arrow marks you can just have a look here my dear actually this line is not indicating two this line is indicating five that means this line indicating five microsecond if you just stand straight then only you can just have a look because i'm just taking the reading from the side way that's what i'm just say this is two microsecond but when i just saw from the straight way it is exactly indicating five microsecond if you want i can just focus the camera here you can just have a look here it indicates exactly five microsecond so you have tried the value here five microsecond five multiplied by 10 to the power of minus six now the rest of the things are very easy you have to 
do your calculation take your calculator what i'm going to do you are going to find the time period time period number of division in x axis multiply by delta t what is my number of division my dear here it is 4.2 4.2 multiply by 5 microsecond so that means 5 10 to the power of minus 6 so what should be the value here 2.1 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 5 so 2.1 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 5 and then you are going to calculate the frequency calculated frequency what is our calculated frequency the formula is given 1 over t already we find the time period here that means 1 divided by this value so 1 divided by 2.1 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 5 gives you the answer as 47,619.04 so I am going to write all these things 47,619.04 now we have to calculate the error percentage my dear listen carefully you are going to find the error percentage by using this formula what is FCRO your FCRO value is this minus your FFN that means frequency in the function generator what value we gave here 50 kilohertz that means this exactly 50,000 am I right 50 kilohertz means 50 multiplied by 10 to the power of 3 so 50,000 we said in the function generator and what value we observed we got by using this formula we got 47,619.04 so by using this formula you have to find the error percentage so this is your calculator frequency and this is your function generator frequency so when you just substitute the value in the given formula your value must be between 0 to 20 percentage clear clear my dear here 50,000 here 47 so that means for sure your, your error percentage will be between 0 to 20 percentage so what you have to do in such a way you have to set the rest of the frequency you have to repeat the same type of method for the rest of the frequencies so what you will get here all your error percentage must be between 0 to 20 percentage if it exceed more than 20 percentage then there will be some mistake clear my dear so in such a way what we learn from here we learn how to measure the number of divisions horizontally and we learn how to find the time period and also we learn how to find the frequency clear so it's one of the easiest experiments so the most important thing here we measure the number of division horizontally but when you come for the second table you are going to find the number of division vertically only these two difference so now what i'm going to do i'm going to explain for one more reading clear because you must know what's the difference you faced in this number of division so what i'm going to do i'm going to set 60 kilohertz so you can see here i'm going to set 60 kilohertz i set 60 kilohertz my frequent my voltage is constant now you can just observe here my dear when you set 50, 60 kilohertz you can see there will be some change in the peak to peak that means horizontally the distance between the two minim two minima get reduced so now what you have to do again i am going to measure how many divisions now here you can just have a look here my dear one two three it's three point four am i right previously we got 4.2 now what's the value when you change the frequency what happened to the distance between the two minima it's reduced so what should be the value one complete box two complete box three complete box and here it's exactly 0.4 that means 3.4 so what i'm going to do i'm going to write 3.4 here and again we have to measure what should be the delta t so delta t we did not touch so again this value is exactly 5 microsecond because we did not touch anything so again this value is 5 microsecond i am going to write the same value here 5 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 6 and then we are going to use our calculator for finding the time period so what should be the value my dear 3.4 multiplied by 5 10 to the power of minus 6 what should be the value here 1.7 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 5 1.7 multiply by 10 to the power of minus 5 once you find the time period we are going to find the calculated frequency by using this formula 1 divided by time period so 1 divided by 1.7 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 5 1.7 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 5 
What's the answer, my dear? 58,823.52. So, 58,823.52. Now, you can just see here, well, how much frequency we set here? 60 kilohertz. That means, this 60 kilohertz is nothing but 60,000. So, 60,000 we ap apply in the function generator. And when we just calculate the signal, when we calculate the time period from this, after that when we calculate the respective frequency from the CRO, what we observed, my dear, there will be small difference only. So when you take the error percentage between this and this, again, your error percentage will be between 0 to 20%. Understand? So in such a way, if you substitute these 70 kilohertz, 80 kilohertz, the same or closer value, will appear here. So that means this value must be closer to this value. Then only your error percentage will be between 0 to 20 percentage. Clear? So this table is just to understand how to find the number of division, how to find the time period, how to find the frequency. Clear? Okay, my dear? So this is the first table. This is the explanation for the first table. Now what I'm going to do? I'm going to explain for the second table. Now, in the second table, what we are going to do? We are going to set the frequency as constant. I am going to change the voltage. So, what I am going to do? And if you can see the most important thing. It's not in kilohertz. It's not in, it's not in kilohertz. It's in hertz. So, what I have to do, my dear? You can just have a look of this. This screen is given in terms of kilohertz. So, if you press one time, what will happen? Your kilohertz is converted to hertz. Now, I have to set 50 kilohertz, 50 hertz. So, I have to set 10 here, and then I will move the cursor, set 50. And what should be our volt? Our volt is 1. So, by touching this, I have to set 1 volt. So, 50 hertz we, we fixed on the screen, and also we fixed 1 volt. Now, we are going to calculate the rest of the calculation by just having look uh, by, by just have a look of the frequency what appeared on the screen from this we are going to calculate we are going to measure something so what i'm going to do there will be no peak i'm going to touch these two okay but here when you just give low frequency what will happen my dear the waves are blinking am i right so don't get confused the waves are running only blinking it's exactly sitting on the same place but only blinking now in this way what we are going to do in the previous table we are measuring the number of divisions between peak to peak that means horizontally we measure am i right but now what we are going to do we are going to count the number of division from the top peak to bottom peak that means highest peak to the lowest peak we are going to measure number of division clear so why it is blinking the reason it's a very low frequency understand okay now in this experiment you have to turn on this voltage this, this multimeter so when you turn on this you are going to measure some voltage here but the most important thing you have to change the multimeter in terms of ac mode you can see ac is up here am i right or not okay now and the most important thing all these variants should be in the maximum level clear understand my dear okay now let's become for taking the reading what you are going to measure from here you can see here number of division bottom to top from the peak so here I already fixed this peak to one line, that means one, this peak to this peak, how many number of divisions, so you can just have a look here, come close, one box, two complete box, three complete box, sorry, one, two, three, again, it's 4.2, am I right, you can just have a look here, because the, the waves is blinking, but anyhow, we have to take the reading. Let's see, peak to peak, bottom peak to top peak, it's exactly 4.2, 1, 2, 3, 4. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write, again I'll check one more time, whether it is correct or not, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4.2, 4. yes, perfect. Clear? Now, we have to measure what should be the vertical sensitivity. My dear, this is your vertical sensitivity, this is your horizontal sensitivity. In the first table, we touch this to measure the horizontal sensitivity. But in the second table, you have to see what should be the value in the vertical sensitivity. Just have a look here. This arrow indicates, I think, 0 
Am I right? Yes, it's exactly 0 0.5. You can just have a look here. This arrow indicates 0 0.5. It's not micro, it's just a number. So this is nothing but your vertical sensitivity. I'm going to write the value here. Clear? And the rest of the things are calculated. And the most important thing, this reading you must take from the multimeter. When you fix this frequency and when you set this voltage, some voltage will be appeared on the multimeter. Let's we just take the reading from this multimeter. Could you please see what's the value here? 0 0.704 volt. So I'm going to take this reading I am going to write here, measured VRMS on the digital multimeter. What should be the value? 0 0.704. That's it. Rest of the things we are going to use our calculator. You can just have a look here, my dear. For finding the amplitude, that means peak voltage, what you have to do? Number of divisions, y-axis, divide by 2. What is the number of division in y-axis, my dear? We already calculated. 4.2 divided by 2. So that means 4.2 divide by 2 multiply by delta v what is our delta v it's 0 0.5 multiply by 0 0.5 what should be the value exactly 1.05 i'm going to write this clear and then we are going to find what should be the calculated vrms this is your observed vrms from the multimeter now by using this reading you are going to calculate it what should be the theoretical value so what should be the value VP, that means voltage, peak voltage, divided by root 2. What is our peak voltage? 1.05. So 1.05 divided by root 2. Root is here, 2. What is the answer, my dear? You can see, 0 0.742. So I am going to write 0 0.742. So now you have to find the error percentage with these two columns. V dash RMS. V dash RMS is nothing but what you calculate minus v rms is nothing but what value you got from the multimeter so this value minus this value divided by this value plus this value multiplied by 100 again your error percentage is should be between 0 to 20 percent clear because this value should be closer in the previous table we focus only on the frequency what frequency you fixed on the multi function generator, what frequency you, cal you got from the calculation. But in the second table, you are going to find the error percentage for the calculated VRMS and the voltage appear on the digital multimeter. So when you just saw the value, both are closer to each other, for sure your error percentage between 0 to 20 percentage. So I will just explain one more reading. So the second reading is 1.5. You should not change the frequency only we have to change this voltage so you can just have a look here one volt is already here so what i am going to do i am going to set only one point sorry see here 50 hertz is fixed at 1.5 voltage we set now you can just have a look here in the peak there will be some variation previously we got 4.2 now we have to find how many values from this peak to this peak that means 1 2 3 4 5 6 6.2 clear so previously we got 4.2 now when you just change the voltage from 1 to 1.5 volt what happened there will be some small variation in the top peak to bottom peak it expanded vertically so one box two box three box four box five six six point two so what i am going to do I am going to write 6.2. Now for this vertical sensitivity, I did not touch anything. Again, the same value, which is nothing but 0 0.5. Clear? So I am going to write the value as 0 0.5. And then we have to see what should be the voltage from the multimeter. You can just have a look here. It's exactly 1.057. So I am going to write this value here. 1.0. And rest of the things, it's a calculation. Let's we check for this reading. Number of division y divided by 2. What is our number of division in y? 6.2 divided by 2 multiplied by our vertical sensitivity. Just 0 0.5. 1.55. So 1.55 divided by root 2. So 1.55 divided by root 2. 
gives you the answer 1.09 now you can see here we got 1.09 as a calculated vrms and from the multimeter we got 1.05 that means both are very closer to each other when you find the error percentage between these two for sure your error percentage is between clear my dear so likewise what you have to do for the second table you have to fix your frequency as a constant only you have to change the voltage so likewise when you change the voltage what will happen there will be small variation appears on the second column and you have to find what should be the voltage appears on the multimeter and then by using the, your calculator you have to calculate the rest of the two things and when you just find the error percentage for sure your error percentage is between 0 to 20. So what's the difference between the first table and the second table? First table we measured everything horizontally, second table we measured the division vertically. Clear? So that's it my dear, there will be no graph for this, only you have to fill this table. Clear? So after you fill the table we, we have to give mark for this table only. Clear? And then please write what should be the source of error, what should be the conclusion. Because what is your conclusion? We learn the basic function of both function generator and CRO. That is your conclusion. There will be no graph. Okay? Understand my dear? So this will be the explanation for your seventh experiment, function generator and CRO. Thank you.